So I got a really interesting setup guide today and definitely by far one which has been requested from me over and over again and I've literally just got to the point of doing this one for people who ask for it and it's a really useful uh, setup guide for putting your games into different locations. So say for example my games are on my C drive. I've actually got a solution for you how to put these games into a different drive. Let's say for example I've got a USB drive and I want to put my games in there and then read them from my main Retrobat installation which is on my C drive. So essentially we can use an external hard drive to store our games on whilst using your Retrobat installation to see them. And this is called Symbolic Links. So in this setup guide today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set this up in how to put your games onto USB drive and for Retrobat on your computer, on your C drive, say, to read them so if this is what you're looking at doing check this one out okay so if you like what you see in today's video as always hit notifications subscribe and also like it helps my channel out a great deal and it also gets you up to date retro back content as i upload it as well as providing setup guides for launchbox retro arch batacera even raspberry pi nowadays and even android devices so be sure to check those out in my playlists so today we're looking at something called symbolic links and this one's going to be a little bit confused in the sun but bear with it and uh, I'm going to make this one as easy as possible. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to just assume you've got a hard drive, a USB hard drive like I'm using right now or in fact I'm using a thumb drive. So what I'm going to do is just plug in my USB drive and for those out there who's not sure how to format it, I'm going to just quickly take you through that process. So here's my usb drive that i've just plugged in as you can see it's got contents on there already so what we're going to do is format this so my c drive is just here and this is what retrobat is installed to and we've got my d drive that i've just plugged in and this is my external usb drive so what i'm going to do to format this is just right click on it format and as we can see uh, the max capacity of this thumb drive is 32 gig uh, file system is by default FAT32 if you want to change that over to NTFS that's entirely up to you I'm going to just leave this to FAT32 uh, either file system will be fine for this and we can also give this a volume name so let's just for example call this uh, games and what we're going to do is just press start on this and OK and just give that a few seconds and that's completely wiping that drive so as you can see uh, D drive is now appearing as games uh, it is also given us 31.9 gigabyte so that's that part done so what we're going to do next is take a look at my retrobat file structure so to do this just right click on the shortcut open file location and under ROMs, what I'm going to do today is actually transfer my NES folder into that D drive which I've just formatted. So my NES folder is here and I've got my game here but of course like I say I'm actually going to put this onto the D drive and link this up with Retrobat. So to do this I'm going to just go back to ROMs and what I'm going to do first of all is go back to that NES folder and in fact, I'm going to just drag it out because we don't need that in there. So just drag this out for now. So I'm going to leave the link in my description for this, but we need to download this program here. This is Link Shell Extension. So what we're going to do is just scroll down the touch and download all Windows 64. So just click on this hyperlink just here. This is Link Shell Extension. And it's going to come up as a dangerous file, but this is a very well trusted file. Just press keep on this. And once that's been downloaded, just left click on it and this is going to open up a little window saying link shell extension. If you just press yes on this, uh, this is going to open up the installer. So obviously select your language. For me, this is English, obviously. So <laughs> press OK. And we also want to give this a destination folder. So if you want to choose a different destination for this to be installed to, just go to browse and locate where you want it to go to. Uh, for me, I'm going to just choose 
the default by C drive and program files. So just press install. And as it says, we need to now restart our computer. So what I'm going to do for now is just press no on this. And I'm going to just shut down OBS, which is my recording application, and restart my computer. Okay, so once you've restarted your computer, what we're going to do is just test out this software which we've just installed and while we have to restart our computer. So what I'm going to do to test this first of all is if I right click on a folder, I'm going to bring up the context menu. And if you're using Windows 11, you'll have to go down to show more options. You're now going to have a new option in here, pick link source. Okay, so now we've got that option, what we're going to do next is open up that USB drive which I formatted earlier. And once we're inside of this USB thumb drive, what I'm going to do is just create a folder in there and go to new and folder creation and I'm going to just call this one Retrobat and I'm putting a capital R on this. And once I've created this folder, I'm going to just open this up and I'm going to drag that folder with my NES game in it, which I've just taken out of Retrobat, which is installed on my C drive. So once we do that, we need to then go back to the Retrobat directory, open file location, and you need to make sure that that system that you're transferring the games to on the USB fun drive is actually fully deleted from your Retrobat ROMs directory. So for this, I'm gonna be obviously deleting NES, which we can see is already gone. So that's all that set up. What we're gonna do next, once you've copied this system folder with your game inside, as you can see here, what we're gonna do is just right click on that system folder. And if we go down to show more options again, we're going to go to pick link source and just left click on this and what we're going to do now is go back to the retrobat directory so right click open file location and what we're going to do here is go back to the roms folder and here's the roms structure as this is installed to the c drive and i'm going to right click again show more options and just scroll down to drop as symbolic link left click and it's likely going to pop up a window saying do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device just press yes on this and what we're going to do next is if we just scroll down we can now see at the bottom we've got a little shortcut and here's my game inside so what we're going to do next is if we go into Retrobat, this game, which I've just linked to my USB drive, should now appear in Retrobat. And here we go, so we've already got the Nintendo NES folder, and here's my game. So what I'm going to do is just quit out of Retrobat, and what I'm going to do is now remove my USB thumb drive, and just open up Retrobat so we can actually see this is now installed to my thumb drive. So just remove, and open up Retrobat again. And here we go, so my USB drive is no longer attached to my computer, and as we can see, that NES folder is now gone. So that's it, it really is that simple. So like I said at the start of my video, if you like what you've seen today, uh, be sure to check out my entire Retrobat playlist. I've got technical setup guides in there like this one today. Plus I've got a uh, whole multitude of different setup guides for si different systems in Retrobat. 
Uh, so yeah, be sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like, and also be sure to check out my other Windows PC front end system setup guides as well as a range of different standalone emulator setup guides which comprise from the ZX81 all the way up to the PS3 era. So finally, I'm asking for donations at the moment. I'm looking for donations to expand my channel and invest in into portable devices so I can cover a different scope of systems rather than just Windows PC or say Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you could donate, I'd be very appreciative of that. But anyways, until next time, stay retro.